Hey guys, Ed Bud here. Time for one of my discussion pieces. At the moment, running shoe midsoles only seem to be going in one direction, and that's up. In 2021, we've seen a whole load of different shoes released with increasingly large stack heights. They're just growing bigger and bigger by the week. It makes me wonder where this is all going to end. Are we going to end up with a shoe that's absolutely humongous, like 60 millimeters stack height? Or will it all come to an end and just start to come back down again? Is it going to be like the hit track from the 80s by Yaz called The Only Way Is Up? Or is it going to be more a status quo down, down, deeper and down? Running in that Boston 10 the other day it did get me thinking about the World Athletics Federation and the shoe rules that they have in place. I mean, the bulk of runners are amateurs, aren't they? They're non-elite, they're not involved in championship racing. Thus, those rules just don't really make a whole lot of difference to most people. And by most people, I'm talking about, you know, 99.9% .9 of the population. It's just a small band of elite people that it's gonna make a big difference to. I wasn't surprised when I attended a local race event recently that there was a whole myriad of different running shoes, super shoes, standard trainers, but I did spot loads of different high stacked midsole shoes. There was the obligatory Vaporfly Next Percent, some variations on the various different Hoka carbon plate models. I even saw the Rocket X there. Lots of Zoom Flies and some of those ASICs high-end models as well. One local runner had an amazing pair of custom Tempo Next Percent. Those are shoes that get me thinking about where this stack height wall will end. So in my size, many running shoes tend to be over that 40 millimeters that's allowed in the heel. I think the regulation European size that they measure is a 42 and I'm a 46. So it's gonna be a little bit over that every time for me. I mean, the rules themselves state that it's allowed to be marginally over that. Sometimes it's quite a bit actually, but none of this really matters to non-championship athletes, right? We're not setting records. We're just racing against our friends, maybe against ourselves. We're not at competitions or high level international events. This is clearly in the minds of sportswear manufacturers right now. Let's not forget that elite athletes that will be worried about these regulations will represent a very small cross-section of where these manufacturers make their profits. It'll be tiny. Adidas makes stacks of cash out of their apparel. I never realized actually just how much they make from their clothing line, regardless of shoe sales. You know, Nike sell loads more shoes than them, but that's pretty much Nike's main thing. They don't make anywhere near as much on apparel. Let's remember that Nike started out just making shoes, didn't they? So. That's their main game. If they make shoes that only comply to those rules, they're gonna miss out on lots of other areas that they could explore. They obviously wanna cash in, don't they? They wanna make shoes that people wanna wear for all sorts of different things, not just running. Casual use, lifestyle stuff, it's gonna limit the appeal of some of the models. That's why I think we're seeing larger stack heights and these innovations. Let's not forget that with Nike, you know, Bauman's big master plan was jogging, wasn't it? is involved in writing that book all about it started that big craze in the 70s average everyday people logging the miles day in day out a lot of people just doing it to keep fit i know lots of people over the pandemic that have been doing loads more exercise to try and keep themselves in shape if they stay fit they'll run more they'll need to buy more shoes they'll wear them out and thus they need more shoes so they can run some more with the regulations not being of consequence to these runners this opens the door to the likes of nike adidas and new balance amongst others to increase the amount of that forgiving foam in the forefoot and the heel we've even seen the likes of asics beginning to experiment with different formulations of foam and distributions of that foam in shoes like the Nova Blast and very recently that Metaspeed Sky shoe as well. I think it's two of them, isn't there? Way back at the beginning of 2020, Nike were very open about the fact that the Tempo Next Percent wasn't gonna be a race shoe. Everybody was up in arms about the fact that the heel stack was above 40 millimeters. They declared very early on that it was a trainer or a partner shoe to the Alpha Fly and that it wasn't a race day option for a tiny selection of elite athletes anyway. I know loads of people that love the Tempo Next Percent, use it in training and they race in local events in it without any issues. They love it. Adidas have been much more bullish though, haven't they, in terms of their approach. In both the Prime X and the Adios Pro 2, they've actually pressed it into the foam in terms of the stack height. 39 millimeters in the Adios Pro 2 and 50 
in the Prime X. Although in fairness, in my size, is a bit more than 39. Adidas are keen to state in their promotional information here on the Prime X that there are no limitations, no reservations, just pure creative, scientific, technical flair. That extra foam height allowing even more rigid pieces to be inserted into the midsole. In the same way perhaps as the Tempo Next Percent additional foam stack height allows for that nylon plate and the addition of those Zoom AirPods as well. Or Air Zoom Pods or whichever way round you want to put it. With Adidas breaking that 50mm heel stack height, do you feel that we'll see even higher non-elite training shoes in the future? And even larger prices too. I think that's a given, isn't it? I predict a further enlarged Nike Zoom X Invincible 2 in the future. Though I did see a picture the other day that they've kind of bypassed that and they're just doing a new upper, which is what Nike do, isn't it? They always seem to have this two shoes cycle. Maybe the Invincible 3 will feature some sort of nylon plate and even more Zoom X foam. I mean, the original version was close to 40 millimeters in the heel anyway. I think they'll have to build something else into the midsole there to improve the stability a little bit. It was a very squashy and compressive shoe. I think they'll find a workable height to stability ratio at some point. I think companies are having to innovate a little bit in terms of the upper where they're increasing the stack height of these shoes. We demand a better lockdown from them due to the stability and they're trying all sorts of things by adding overlays, different types of lacing to make them viable options and separate them away from those casual lifestyle type shoes. So lots to think about there. I can only see things going upwards now that Adidas have broken through that 50 millimeter barrier. Question for today's vlog. Do you see running shoe midsole stack heights increasing even more over the next 12 months? Or do you feel that we've reached a foam ceiling? Let me know what you think down in the comments. A musical interlude for you. I've been going through all the Scott Walker albums once again and I'm back at Scott 4. I already love track 2 on here which is called On Your Own Again. Quite a short tune but I really love the sentiment of it where he's able to sort of lift things up on the chorus. So many emotions in Scott Walker tracks. Almost orchestral type feelings it can bring you up and then send you right down again. Track 6, The Hero of the War and also track 8, Duchess are top picks from this one. I think it was originally released back in 69 but it's aged very well. In fact, all Scott Walker's material does. It could have been made last week and it would not surprise me. Quality of his voice is superb as well on this fourth album. Definitely go and check it out if you haven't heard it before, guys. It's full of drama, wonderful arrangements using all sorts of different instruments, varying time signatures and songs about all sorts of different things. Some that will make you feel like life is great and others that may not, but that's why it's so good. Go and check it out, Scott 4 by Scott Walker. Okay, thanks for joining in with the discussion today, guys. Please post your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. It really does make for a nice melting pot, like a steaming cauldron of goulash. Quite fancy a bit of goulash now, I've thought about that. If you haven't done so already, guys, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications so you're notified, because it's a good thing. Also helps the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up, like, and share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.